Hey. hey. On time. That's what I like. That's what I like to see. No other way. Last time I did this with Quinn, he was like five minutes late. And I was like, I just texted you 10 minutes ago and you said you were good. <laughs> then what'd you do? Just stare into the camera. You know, I just stared and I, just, I showed up on the map that we did and we put up in the office. Um, nice, just nice. Paul said. It gets God, awkward. It, yeah, it's awkward. You're just standing here like. I know. You're like, so. Got any questions? I know, right? How's quarantine been? I mean, it's been all right. It's been whatever. At this point, it's like become the new. You know, know, the new routine, the new norm. It's kind of scary, but it's like, when are we going to be able to go outside and just be free again? I know. I don't After a while, I don't think it's. I don't, I don't think, think it's. I was talking to uh, some friends the other day. It's like we went from like a hundred to zero. You know. Yeah, and, and I like don't know if we're gonna and now it's like we're opening up so we're gonna get to like 20 and 30 but I don't know if we'll get beyond that for like a really long time. I know. I mean, they're saying it's probably gonna be maybe a, a year, year and a half before it's like yeah. kind of normal, but it's like our new normal now. Right. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. I was tricky when they were like, okay, stuff is about to get shut down. And I was like, wait, what? So yeah. like, oh, you overseas. Last day. Yeah, I was overseas. Yeah. I was playing at Fenner. And I was overseas, and our GM was like, um, I think you need to leave tomorrow. And I was like, what? Our, we're, our season, like, we were still supposed <laughs> to play again. We played against Gala with no fans. Wait, that was, like, because of the that pandemic? Was the last, that, was that was the last, last game. Because of the, okay. uh, the pandemic. And Man, don't like, you normally play them without fans? It gets too crazy. <laughs> I know, but I'm just like, out of all games, you make us play that game against Gala with no yeah. fans. Yeah. I, know, I don't know. It was weird. Anyway, have you seen the SBs? Yeah. Uh, are you going to have a red carpet? Uh, <laughs> an orange carpet? Um. <laughs> Starting early, I see. Yeah, uh, orange carpet. Yeah, no, we're going to, I think we're going to do some things with our clothes. We'll see. We're, we're like in the process of putting it all together. Are you going to have some nice kids? I'm assuming. I yeah. mean, that's the plan. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Do you have your ring light? Yeah. We actually have, like, three in the house right now, um, none of which are ours. So we've had a couple people, like, we need to do some stuff, and they sang ring lights. We're like, okay. Thank you. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, anyway, so I'm going to take you back, and then we're going to work our way all the way up, you know, so, uh, okay. so we're going to start with biggest influence um, – from like day one, <clears throat> Christ the King High School, I guess. But um, biggest. That's not even day one. That's crazy. I know, right? But biggest influence um, and why you see the game the way you do, how you play, um, all of that. Right. Um, <clears throat> when you put it that way, I'll have to say it was my AAU coach. Um, mm -hmm. Her name's Jill Cook. And she, uh, the name of our AU team was Liberty Bells. They were like closely affiliated with Christ the King. So like Tina Charles played for Liberty Bells. Shamiko Host Call played for Liberty Bells. We all played for Liberty Bells. Uh -huh. And Jill was my coach. I She started coaching my age group probably like, maybe like eighth grade was the first time. And then all through high school. And she was the one that just forced me. To, to, to like come out of my shell as a basketball player, force me to be a leader, force me to do all these things. Um, she was just really hard on me, not in any kind of like, you know, she wasn't like harsh. She was just hard. Right. And like I said, it just, it really pulled me out of my shell because I think I am shy by nature. So you I are. needed that. Oh, for sure. You, you got, you're, you're seeing like, you know, Sue, no, it's, it's like Sue 3.9. <laughs> Soon to be 4.0 in a couple months. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so why do you wear the jersey number you wear? Oh. Uh, that's just because my sister and I are both born in October. It's the 10th month. And uh, wow. she's five years older. Something you about what? October. Something October. about October. <laughs> she's older. She chose the number. So it was my turn. I was like, I guess I'll go. With it. <laughs> and it just stuck. All right. So name your three things that's most important as a point guard. Um, like if what I want. To, like, narrow, it, narrow it down. Like what do you right, mean? Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think you have to have an ability to bring the best out of your teammates. Mm -hmm. I think you have to, um, simultaneously be able to make plays. You have to be a playmaker too. 
Um, and I think the third thing is just, man, narrow it down to three things. Yeah. Um, bring the best out of your teammates. Be able to make plays. Um, it's hard because I yeah, like I guess fine. Like yeah, like, I guess like be a good communicator. Like, so I guess they're kind of like intertwined all. Right. Well, yeah. So just sure. like be a good communicator. Be able to communicate. Right. Um. So how was your experience at UConn? Um. Like coming in from freshman year up until senior year, like it, the progressions um throughout that in your relationship with Gina um I mean if you asked me this when I was in college I would have been like this is terrible it's so hard <laughs> you so had a hard mean. <laughs> from freshman year to senior year or did it get yeah like no it changed like so freshman year it like started out probably like everybody's freshman year you're just everything's new you're trying to like figure your way out it was it was nothing changed in the hard department it was always very challenging practices and whatnot um but I got injured my freshman year so I, I didn't really play I didn't really have a freshman year so that kind of helped me I think mm -hmm. that was probably I usually point to that as one of the big turning points from for my career I mean it wasn't a career then but you know what I mean because yeah. I had to take a step back things were kind of coming at me fast it forced me to learn in a new way and then how wait pause how is that like being on the sideline because I had to experience yeah. senior, year senior year so like freshman year coming in you thought you were about to have the you know best time in college and everything is gonna be roses yeah and, <laughs> like bam injury it's like yeah. changed everything for me changed everything um I feel like I, I the probably like the first month was the hardest because it was it was my ACL so it's like a long rehab so the first month was the hardest because it's just not how I envisioned it. You know, it's almost like you kind of have like a white picket fence version of like what you want your career to be. And I was like, wait a minute, this is, I'd only heard about people carrying their ACL. I was like, this is happening to me. Um, so yeah, it sucked. I think my, my team did such a good job though, especially Shay Ralph. She's actually an assistant there now. She was my teammate. She had already torn her ACL, I think like two times at that point. So she was there with me, like, not every day, but every now and then she would check in. Like, she knew I needed to check in, you know? And that kind of kept me connected to the team. But, yeah, it was it was awful. I just tried to make the best of it. But looking back, sometimes it's just like, wait, that was me? Like, I, I you know, I only played three years of college. It's so weird. Like, I know. you know, it's just, like, such a bizarre thing. With Gino from freshman to senior year. I remember you saying, I don't know if it was USA, can't remember the story. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> the story of like he made you so mad or something I forgot the story that you said Where when he yelled that? at someone who was in the gym that one like someone was walking through no he yelled at you yelled at you and you muffled something under your breath oh yeah what was what happened I <laughs> <laughs> not it was it's like so so at Connecticut they're like really the coaching staff is really strict on context on contesting shots you could be 15 feet away you better get your hand up like no joke and this one practice player, he was also our manager, so we knew him really well. He was with us a lot. This one practice player took a shot. This story's been like told numerous. I didn't contest it. I didn't. But Coach Ariyama like stopped the play. It was like the game winner, if you will. And he was like, Tom, did Sue contest that shot? Even though he already knew the answer. And Tom was like, no. And I was just like, ew. So I was like under my breath. I was like, whatever. He's just gonna say what you want him to say. And that's when Coach Ariyama hit me with the, what'd you just say? <laughs> <laughs> you know that mo I was like, oh, uh, you don't want to repeat it. Never. What'd you just say? I was like, he's just going to say whatever you want him to say. And uh -huh. he just like lit my ass up. I was crying. Oh, it was awful. I always like to say, though, he apologized the next day publicly. So uh, he probably, I wonder if he uses that, any, that kind of example at any point. Maybe, after. maybe. So did you have a good relationship the whole time? I think it's important for the point guard to like have a good relationship with their coach. I think they're not always going to agree, but did you always have a good relationship with him in college? Yeah, I did. Um, you know, we would go home to our dorm room and like, mm -hmm. you know, talk crap about him and, and hate him left and right. But I had like a great relationship with him. Like, again, he, he was hard. He was straightforward. He, he told me exactly what he wanted for me every year, what he wanted me to work on. Super blunt which I appreciated. And, um, you know, from there, when you know where you stand with somebody, you can kind of work through anything. Right. And then you get drafted to Seattle. Well, you win a couple championships. And then you get drafted to Seattle. Um, and it kind of gave you, gave you the keys as soon as you kind of got there. How was yeah. that 
transition like like you have like if they give you the keys and you're like this rookie point guard my rookie year I didn't really play so I was like <laughs> all right just looking around trying to figure everything out and then I got to LA and they were like you gotta do this 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 and I was like whoa this is way <laughs> like way too much especially at the point guard position you gotta do every single thing so what was that transition like and they're like here this is this is it yeah um well, interesting. Something not a lot of people probably know uh-huh. is that my senior year, uh, D and I, we were the backcourt. We had been the backcourt the year before, but we had like a bunch of, um, like Svetlana Brasimova was on the team. Like I mentioned, Shay Ralph, like all American types. So now it's really just me and D. We're the backcourt, and you know we're very interchangeable, right? And she was definitely like the scorer on the team, like in, in terms of me and her. Like she was more of the scoring guard. But D got all the outlet passes. I ran the floor. I never got the outlet. She oh was always God. the one getting the outlet, passing it ahead. Always. Like 90% that's of the so, game. That's crazy because I feel like you get the outlet and you're just like. I know. <laughs> so when I first got to Seattle, I was like, oh, wait, I have to go get this? Like, I have to bring the ball up the court? It was such a, it was actually like a big, we're talking mostly like on rebounds and transition. Like, I'd bring it up when it was a dead ball, but it was, it was a huge change. It's kind of weird to think about it now, but it was like this huge change. But to your point, I was totally given the keys, could not have, could not think of a better situation, teamed up with Lauren Jackson right away. I mean, I, I, like, pick and roll play is my favorite. She thrives in pick and rolls. We, like, connected immediately on the court. And, um, yeah, so, like, my my rookie year, there was adjustments because the play is so different. But I think because I was just, like you said, given the keys, it allowed me to work through it really, really early and really, not easily, but I was able to get to the other side in that first year. What were the, what was, like, the easiest thing and the hardest thing, like, two ends of the spectrum? Um, The hardest thing was losing. The hardest thing was losing. I was not used to that. I had only, I mean, I'd lost, like, a handful of games in college. So in four years, I lost four times. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, I'm like I'm just, hey, I'm telling the story. <laughs> um, and then we lost like game one. And I remember I came in the locker room like all pissed and, and everyone was just like looking at, you know, and look and like, they were like, where do you want to go to dinner tonight? And it, like everybody just moves on. You know how it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to learn how to deal with losing. That was really one of the harder, harder parts. Um, and then like the physicality of it all, that's always going to be an adjustment. I don't care who you are. Um, you're going against grown women, you know? Right. So I remember the first time that like Ruthie Bolton D me up. I was like, holy, because that's just, she's just aggressive. She like, you can't move her. What? Full court? Yep. Yeah, that was the Sacramento teams, man. They were, they were grimy on defense. Um, so yeah, that was probably the hardest part, you know? And then, um, you know, you could sprinkle other stuff in there, the schedule, the travel, that kind of stuff. Uh, but luckily basketball, it just kind of fit. The easiest thing, like the easy transition, what was the kind of the easiest thing for you to adjust to? Um, um, shockingly, what was easier than I thought was um, the ball was in my hand a lot. Like in Connecticut, it was in everybody's hand all the time. But now I was being asked to like make a lot of the plays, have the ball in my hand. And at first it was uncomfortable. Like I said, I didn't want to get the outlet. But slowly but surely, like, I kind of got more comfortable with that. And it, and it came pretty, pretty easily. Yeah, and I think you won after two years in the league, being in the league two years. Yeah, um, I won my third year, yeah. Yeah, I, was, I won my second year, and I was just like, okay, I got this. I'm going, like, five more. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Nah. Nope. Hey, it took us uh, six years to get back. Six years to get back to my second and then eight years to get to the third. Okay. okay. I know. Seattle Storm, you don't know? We either lose in the first round or we win the whole thing. That's what we do. <laughs> so I never got out of the first round except for those three years. So in between that time, what was, like, your growth moment? What did you learn? Like, um, for me, I had to get my body together because it was, Same. like, from – coming to LA and then to now like getting my body in the best shape like the point out you got to be on your p's and q's all the time so that was the hardest thing for me yeah same I had like two rounds of that the first Mm -hmm. came the first came like right like 2006 7 so you know like I've already been in the league a couple years more than a couple years um I've already won a championship you know I've done yeah. All the all the things you can do, been to the Olympics. But now it's like 2006, 7 I'm kind of like, 
you know, I feel like I gained a little weight. I just had to like reevaluate. And it wasn't, um, at that point, I didn't like hire anybody. I just kind of was like, you're eating like crap, so stop it. So I tried to like cut down some things. And it was all in the name of like wanting to be, well, we had lost in the world championships in 2006. And it was like this redemption for 2008. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of all in the name of like, doing that. And truth be told, someone that helped me a lot, I'm sure this will come up. Um, Brian Adler became our coach in 2008. So that was like, you know, he, <laughs> and he was like, kind of getting me back. He challenged, he was similar to Coach Ryama, just like the way he challenged me. And he was like, I mean, I can hear it in my head now, like, Sue, keep the ball in your hands. Sue, keep the ball in your hands. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you know. Coming up the sideline, and you're just like, ah, I'm, I'm I know. Up the <laughs> Yeah, but like, uh, it helped. And then, the, then, so in terms of getting my body right, that really happened later down the road. That was like a mini, but then later down the road, like probably we're, we're in 2020, I would say five years ago. Yep, is when I like really honed in. I'm talking like changed my diet, changed my workout regimen, hired people, like went all out on it. And it was either like, I was either gonna like literally plateau and probably into retirement or I had a chance and luckily it turned around. Are you like a Tarian? You know, it's like I only eat fish and I eat chicken on Mondays and Wednesdays. <laughs> but on Friday I might have a steak. Yeah. Nah. I'm kind of I mean you've hung out with me. I'm not yeah. I'm kinda of open to whatever. Um there's things I limit and I'm more about like when I eat things versus okay, the what, yes, there's like a what to it, but it's more like when I'm gonna do it. And right. then I, it's usually like very quick like rundown is like I'm eating to fuel myself and then I'm eating to refuel myself and it's just like a cycle right all right so speaking of coming down the sideline with Brian Adler yeah good you're segue on three, you're on a three-on-two situation mm -hmm. I feel like people don't appreciate the 10 different things that come through our mind as yeah. we're passing half court like I'm looking at the defender <laughs> but for you guys when I'm playing you guys if Alicia Clark is back there I'm like I gotta do something very precise <laughs> or something versus like if somebody else is up there I can just lob it up to Candace right, right, right. whatever like is that the same for you or pick your two three on two players and like you're just like okay let's go and you can do whatever I mean pick my favorite too it's yeah, too easy you pick your favorite two, three on two you're coming down you don't have to make too many decisions yeah you know is this like I, I pick ones that are like on my team now that I've played with like give me some played, parameters that you've, that you've played with okay okay um all right if i had to go i can give you like years now if i had to go college okay one of like i think the ones you don't hear about like one of the players you don't hear about from that time and i would obviously i would obviously probably have diana on one side although i don't know her slow ass who knows but i would probably have d over there <laughs> you just want the trail three it's fine i know that's true and then i would have swin swin man swin is like so legit as a basketball player but like even beyond that in transition. Swin finishes everything. She's faster than anybody on the court 90% of the time. Um, I loved playing with Swin. So if I have something like that on both sides, I mean, it's pick your poison after that. Right. Yeah. Because I have to, like, sometimes I'm thinking, I know my players, like, if they're better at pulling up on the right side, and it's like you yeah. hold it for an extra second longer so they can get their feet set. But mm -hmm. a lot of people just, like, they don't understand what's going through our minds as we're passing half court. Like it's like ten different things. Yeah, for sure. Like I personally, if if I look up and I see types of players that I know can handle the ball and make decisions, I'm actually gonna kick it ahead. Uh -huh. Like I don't, I don't, I don't always like to dribble it up. I like to kick it ahead and immediately make the defense make a decision. That and if that sense. player, if that player, like I said, if I look up and I see, like obviously Diana, I can kick it. Then I know once that player goes to her, she passes it back to me. Now I'm actually on a two on one. That makes everything easy. I either will have a pull up, a layup, or they come, you dish, the whole thing. So I actually like kicking it ahead sometimes. Do you have like a pet peeve in transition? Mine is like when they're fanning out when they have like, <laughs> a layup. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just like now, now, now they're recovering. Now, now yeah. they're recovering. So that. Um, like one of my pet peeves and then like they fan out to a weird angle so it's like they're not even nothing ready. it's just now we have nothing now we now it's just yeah, like we had up, and now we're running a different play uh okay. two two things came to mind okay so one is when like like let's be honest i don't it's not that i don't want to shoot it 
I mu I'd much rather just pass it and let the, let whoever it is shoot it. Okay. So in transition, when you like do what you need to do to get the angle to make the pass, and they have a shot and they go boop and they pass it back to you, and then I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I hate that. Especially when they pass it back below the block and everybody's coming. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And now you I'm like, well, thanks. Like, listen, we all have uh, you know, we we all have strengths here. This is not mine. Okay. Um. God, what was the second one I was going to say? Oh, this one's about Stewie and Jewel. They know this already, so I'm not spilling any beans. These two, their first, like, two years, had this, like, fall in love with each other alley-oop play where they would literally come up the court. It would be, like, a two-on-one, the two of them, and they would pass it back, forth, back, forth. And then it would be, like, alley-oop. And then the other one would alley-oop it back. And then, they'd alley and then and they actually have two plays where it finished, like, amazing. Like, Jewel has, like, a one-handed, like – <clears throat> excuse me, like alley-oop type, like one-handed finish. Stewie has one, I think. They never finished it other than those two times. <laughs> and of course, the Storm only show those highlights. And every time it came on, I'd be like, don't you two get any ideas? I'm like, I don't want to see that anymore. I was like, you turn it over every other time you do it or we don't get a shot. So I'm like, I know it looks sexy right now. I'm like, but you got to quit it. <laughs> that is so, oh yeah. The, uh, they called it the Julia for Yeah, something. that was a Notre Dame thing. I don't know. Oh, uh, I just remember hearing that. I was like, yeah, the I Julie. Like, Oop. I'm like Julie. Oop. I was like, okay, <laughs> that, that, that's, oh, that's funny. So they they already know that one, so I don't feel bad telling it. Yeah, that's true. Um, are you excited for any rookies or anything like that to come in the league? Yeah, I think the I think like the top four, really top three, but top four are kind of. Um, I'm excited to see how all of them pan out. They all kind of have like. They're interesting storylines, you know, they all, there's, you could argue all of them, like the pros and cons and like, what's going to translate, what's not. Um, so like, honestly, and I think I could say something like older, it's like the saddest part about this WNBA season not happening now. There's so many reasons. I was like really excited to see these storylines for these rookies play out. Right. Like we played against them and we've talked about this. It's like, we could literally go down the line on all of them. Like Sabrina, obviously the most hype. I can kind of appreciate, especially as a point guard. I think the thing that's tough when you come into the league as the number one pick is like number one pick, there's this like connection to like, oh, you got to score 20. Mm -hmm. And as a point guard, I bet there's been no point guard ever that has averaged 20. Uh, by the way, only one person averaged 20 last year, I think. And it was like BG. So it's like not a lot of people are doing that. But I think when you're number one pick, it's like you're supposed to score and do all these things. But mm -hmm. where, she, where, she, where her game shows up is all these other ways. And so it's like it goes two ways, right? Like on a young team, will those things show up? But on a young team, she'll have the ball a lot. Yeah. So it's like it kind of goes both ways. So I'm like totally excited to see what happens. Because mm -hmm. I think long term, her, her game will like fully show itself long term. Yeah. I know. I'm excited. I, I just don't want her to put so much pressure on herself that she just – you know, doesn't play her game and how she's played at Oregon. I'm excited yeah. for um, Satu to play. I know what we yeah. play. <laughs> she walked, and remember she, D told us she walked up and D was like, you're not as tall as I thought you were. Yeah, and I was like, damn, she's tall. <laughs> <laughs> a lot taller than I thought, and she's yeah, old. Yeah. She, you know, she's legit. Um, yeah, her body, like her, her, I don't know, her versatility. That's the stuff that in women's basketball becomes un unguardable. Mm -hmm. Dewey, Elena, like it's just size and versatility in women's basketball, especially is always going to, I mean, not just women's like men's like KD. Nobody can guard KD. Why? Cause the man's nearly like seven feet tall and he does the thing, you know? So that could be Satu if she, if she plays her cards right for sure. Yeah. Um, so do you have, all right, so hopefully you give me some good answers here. Okay. And um, you're not too scared to give me answers. Do you have a person that you tried to get to Seattle and they just didn't come? Um, that didn't come? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. There's probably like 30, to be honest. Um, <laughs> no, I'd, I'd be recruiting. <laughs> Everybody? <laughs> um. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see. Oh, that's. Oh, 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 I have one. Oh, two of them came to okay. mind. All right. So it's 2017. This is the most recent. 2017 All-Star in Seattle. I had a little soiree. Um, and oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. No, yeah, you were there. 
On the and roof. I was in, I had been in Steph Dolson's ear for like a long time. Uh -huh. And I walked up to her and I was like, this is your recruiting trip. <laughs> I was like, see all this? I was like, see the fans? see the cool restaurants, see the city, see how everybody loves us here. And I told her, I was like, you would fit perfect. Like she really, I, I, to this day, listen, I'm so happy with our team. I, I mean, I can't complain, but Stephanie Dolson would fit our style, fit our culture like perfectly. And I tried to sell her on it. She wasn't, I think she was like in contract and whatnot. It was kind of like half joking, half serious, but that was the one that, that got away from me. And then I tried to get Ann Waters one time too. Oh. Yeah. I wanted Ann Waters back. It's still open. We ended up getting her later, but I wanted her like, like a couple years before that. Yeah, I played with. Uh, was it three years ago in Kaiser? I played. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, she was on the Sparks too. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. It, she was on the year that we won. But like when I was actually able to play with her a lot, it was in Kaiser and overseas. Yeah. So the year uh, I wanted her was mm -hmm. the year that the San Antonio Stars went to the finals. That was the year I wanted her. Because we had Edwige Lawson on our team. Mm -hmm. And Edwige oh, and yeah. my best friend. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, let's do this. Like, yeah, let's put it all together. Let's figure this out. <laughs> I was talking to her in Russia. Yeah. Speaking of overseas, so you played in Russia. That's the only country you played in? Yeah. 10 years. Oh, that must be nice. Yeah. How was that experience for you? <laughs> I mean, take, take the good, you take the bad, you take. What's your favorite country to play in and visit? To play? Um, probably Spain. But that was I love Spain. Who did who did they have there? So back then they had Valencia was really good, Salamanca was really good, uh, Madrid was good for like a little bit. Um, those are the two main teams in in uh, Euroleague where we played. But yeah, the trip to Spain was amazing because all of a sudden you could like take off your layers of clothing. You were like on you know in Valencia you're like on the water. Um, they have great fans. The games were always intense. So it was like perfect I played, mix. I played in Girona for a month, and that was that yeah. Was we played fun. against you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember. I was. It was my first time overseas, and I'm like warming up, and I'm looking down. I'm like, woof, <laughs> woof. Yeah. And I, I was like, all right, here, here goes nothing. <laughs> Um, and now look at you. You're like a know, seasoned vet over there. I know. See, now I'm considered a vet. I'm just like, all right. Yeah, you're a grown up. I know. You're a grown up. Grown up. <laughs> okay, so um, I feel like since you've been playing and they had Spartak and they had, oh, what's the other team in Russia that was that the next one? Ekaterinburg? No, they're still, they're still. You know, oh, you mean back. But since, oh, no, Spartak was good. Dynamo was good. Dynamo, like, or yeah, Orenberg was good. The lug that even messed around was pretty good. So since then, I feel like the value of point guards overseas isn't the same as when you were playing. And I don't, I feel like they're undervalued a little bit more. Like, I think post players are always, you know, been the kind of overseas. It might be different with, you know, when you were going overseas. Um, but I just feel like the point guards now, like, they're not as valued overseas to me. Yeah, 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 no, I know. Um, so I had a passport for, like, a lot of my years. I remember. Yeah, so that definitely helped. Because I, I, I actually don't think – I mean, it's tough to say. It's like they only have two spots, right, to fill with, with Americans. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they always want the scorer, and they most likely want, like, a post player. And so you're right. I mean, even when, I'm, I'm saying like, even when I was like kind of coming up in it all, I don't think point guards, my early years in Dynamo, like definitely didn't get the same respect. Um, I remember even one time the, the, I would get, there was this one coach we had who like, you had to run the play to the end. So like Chelsea, even if you ran some play, you threw the ball ahead, you set the screen, you did the do, you caught it at three point line and your d defender fell down. If that were me and I shot it, he would, he would stop practicing yell at me. You had to run the play to, like, get what the play was for. Where was this at? This was in Dynamo. So this is, like, my second year in Russia. Uh -huh. And I remember the GM came up to me, and he, he showed me, like, my stats from the WNBA. <laughs> he, like, pulled up my stats from that year. And he was like, you know, where's this player? Oh. And I was just like, I'm, 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 like, not confrontational whatsoever. And I was just like, oh, I'll try to do better. But in my head, I was like, I'm not even allowed to do the things. That, that I normally do. But I think that's how they view point guards. And slowly but surely, I think myself, Tisha, 
if you want to count D, even D, um, we like broke that down in Russia. Because now, now, I mean, by the time I was there, like Kathy came over, Celine Dumerk got signed. There was a lot of point guards, to your point. Right. Um, what do you think the on court is on court with the biggest difference? Um, of course, you have like language barriers and stuff like that. Yeah. But what do you think the biggest difference of like leading a team um, mm -hmm. versus overseas and WNBA? <sighs> or the uh, way you think the game as well? Yeah. So overseas, I think what I think is better is the season's longer. So you're just together more. I know you don't play, you might not play as many games a week, but you're just, you're, you're kind of like in it for a longer time. And you really get to know people. You really get to develop. You can see from like, you know, whenever you get there, October, you can see from October to April, like how far the team has come. And I think it makes it easier to connect. And then from there, you can obviously lead better. So that's definitely like a positive difference. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, language barrier can be tough. You know, teammates with different motivation levels can be tough. Um, you know, people going out a lot can be tough. But and then it's like you're overseas. You're trying to make the best of it. So you just got to, you know, you got to put your nose down and, and, and grind it out. So what is, where or what team is the best team to play for overseas? Um, this is what I'll say. So, okay. well, because I was on some monster Spartak teams. I was on some monster Spartak teams. So, so like, if, I, I don't know who's watching. Yeah, yeah. Like, who was on your team, Spartak? I mean, okay. So we'll go, we'll go, I'll say Spartak was the most talented team I was on. So okay. it was me, Diana, Lauren Jackson, Sylvia Fowles. That's well, like a cheat code. I know. But listen, when, we, when I tell you who we were playing against, you'll be like, okay. So it was us four. Then it was Noel Quinn was on the team. Uh, Sonia Petrovich was on the team. Um, Sonia was really young, but she was on the team. Kelly Miller was on the team. Um, and then we had like three legit not Russian national team players. Um, I'd say their names, but I don't know if anyone's going to know. But anyways, okay. <laughs> so the team we played against. So I always say that, so this was the EuroLeague Final Four semifinals in 2008. Eight, I think. Dang, 2008, a long time ago. And the team we played, I always say this was the best game nobody saw. I think I said this on Svetlana's IG too. It's the best game nobody saw. Because it was um, Tweety Nolan, Penny Taylor, Cappy Pondexter, um, Sandrine Gruda, Maria Stepanova, Asia Jones, and then they had another two, three national team players. One of them was Svetlana Brasimova. And I might even be missing somebody. And this was like a real game. So like it was just like crazy legit players, and then I know I saw Candace in here. So then the next he, year, he's just commenting and asking if she <laughs> has a question. She's not even because oh. then the next year is when Candace joined ECAT, uh -huh. and that that was so that was yeah. Then like J Mac was on our team. We still had Sill. They had like Very Candace wow. and Waters, Celine Dumer, Cappy Pondex are still there. Tweety still there. Bieber went there. The names are like crazy. The names are crazy. Now the, I mean, even before the pandemic has started, like it's not like the things you would hear or the videos and you walk into a gym and you see who used to be on the team and they're all stacked on like not the same and then they made different rules and stuff yeah. like that. Like just to have differences amongst different teams. I know, I know. Especially when I first went to Turkey, I was like, how do they have all those players? Like I was, <laughs> I was so- confused. Yeah, Turkey can have like a lot of Americans, right? But they- that they changed some of the rules and I think like with the passport they changed some stuff. Okay. Um you could only have you have to have two Turkish players on the court at all times. Um mm -hmm. things are just different. It's like Russia. Especially in yes, Turkish league, but in Yearly obviously you have a bunch of European players on the league. Oh, I mean on the court. Um okay, so transition a little bit more. Okay. Um best Olympic year. Best time at the Olympics. Oh man, it's like picking your favorite kid. <laughs> oh, it's tough. It's tough. Um, start easier. Greatest? Can you do like the greatest team or like the best team? Yeah. Uh, um. Well, I'll say this: the Athens Olympics. I think part of it was because it was my first. Was really something else. I mean, we lived on a boat. 
Yeah. And it's, this is going to sound like some small detail, but all of our, because the time change wasn't as great. Like when we went to Beijing, it was crazy. Um, actually Rio wasn't so bad, but we played all of our games early. So it was nice because we would get like the whole afternoon, the whole evening, and then the full next day off. So you actually got to do a lot more in that Olympics. Some other Olympics, it was just like logistically too hard. Like uh, Beijing, it was really tough to get anywhere. Traffic was crazy. You couldn't get taxis. So like overall, Athens will probably go down as, as one of the best ones. Um, we had a, a really good time. The games were, excuse me, really competitive like at the end. They actually replayed that Australia game pretty recently, the 2004 game. Yeah. It was a close game. Was I mean, I didn't hardest, play at all, but it was a close that's game. the hardest Olympics or whatever you could say? Uh, or the road to getting gold? Was that like the hardest road that you guys went on? Maybe. Maybe. But I'll say this. Every Olympics, every Olympics, except Rio, which is why Rio might be the best team. It's like, how do you know? Was it the best team? D says it is because we were kind of all in our primes-ish. Mm -hmm. But we like it seemed like the competition wasn't as great, okay. and that's not to knock the other teams, but that's what it felt like compared to others. Because every other Olympics, like go back to London, we were losing to Australia at halftime, losing every semifinal game. In in Beijing, we played Russia. It was to the end in the semifinals, like it, it was it was the last couple of minutes to decide the game, and then same in in Athens. Okay, all right. So last part, I gotta get a paper out for you. This okay. For hot seat, we now transform it from rapid fire to hot seat because you just did, it just didn't work with rapid fire. It was like so <laughs> people weren't hard. listen. I do rapid fire when I do IG lives. People don't know what the rapid part means. It's like this supposed to be like, fast. It's, it's just like a slow fire, like a slow yes, starter and it fire. slows you down. Yeah, and I'm just like oh, okay, I feel your pain on that. Question, and then if you're trying like, to make this fast, I'm with there, you. No, no, no. We're gonna go hot seat because a couple of these questions that kind of like. My text, you might do a little thinking or something like that. Okay, okay. Okay. Best point guard of all time? Huh. Women. Male or female? Women. Women? Best point guard of all time? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's go with, uh, I'm going to say Lindsey Whalen. <laughs> oh, okay. Best men's point guard of all time? Men's player. You know, I'm going to go John Stockton. Oh, I like that. Someone was just talking to me about it the other day, and I was like, you're right, leader in assists and steals? That's crazy. I know. And I, I, when watching The Last Dance, it's like, it's crazy that they did that. I know. I forgot that they played them two years. It's like all the memories are just – I forgot the they played them back-to-back -back in 97 and 98. Oh, man. I'm like, like, they were – they like, I used to – you know, I, I was a little younger. But <laughs> I watched – I know. It was all new to you. <laughs> you were like, wow, live sports again. No, oh, my <laughs> You're a hater. <laughs> I've never You're, seen this. That's rude. <laughs> I remember I'm a vet now. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Best coach in the WBA, excluding Dan Hughes. I don't want you to get you in trouble. Excluding Dan Hughes. Best coach like, to ever coach in the WBA. Oh, God. Um, I don't know. It's, like, hard to know. It's only the ones I've had. Um, I'm going okay. to give a shout out to Ann Donovan. Rest in oh. peace. just got weird. Oh, t to go. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I got you now. Is that your workout? Yeah. <laughs> Put it on workout. the whiteboard? Yeah. <laughs> so I can go outside and do it. Okay. <laughs> ECAT, ECAT or Spartak? Spartak. Oh, okay. It's my first. Yeah. You always remember your first. Country you wish you could have played in? Um, probably Spain. Okay. You know where I know I don't want to play in? Turkey. I'm good, thanks. Why? I don't know. I just hear all these stories. I know it's – I've been there, and it's amazing. I love the food. The people are great. And then there's, like, this one part of it where, like, we played there, and we knocked Fenner out of the EuroLeague uh, – Playoffs and they were throwing shit at us, so it's like I'm good. Oh no, it's, it, the fans are a little crazy, especially Fender yeah. against Gala. Like it's, yeah. it's something I've never seen before. So love okay. to visit. See in see in Spain. Bet okay, best hands. So like you throwing, they're catching everything. Yolanda Griffith. Ooh, magnets. Teacher sucks it right in. He just said the same thing. 
-hmm. Yeah, it's no joke. Yeah. Worst hands. Oh, I can't <laughs> do it. You can't do it? I can't do it. I'm still playing. It's I can't do it. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll ask you later. Yeah. Okay, favorite pick and roll partner? Ooh. Just because it's been longer, I'll say Lauren Jackson. Stewie's right there, though. And you know who else is right there? Camille Little. You know, that was my work wife. That's what Brian used to call us. <laughs> Why? <laughs> he didn't say those words. We kind of ran with it. Because he was like, when are you two going to realize that, like, like, Camille, the more you set screens for her, like, the more you'll get. And Sue, the more you play with Camille and pick and roll, the more it'll work for you. Like, he realized that we just had, like, a really good vibe in the pick and roll. For real. For real. He was like, so he kept saying, like, you guys will work so much better. So we were like, what's up, work wife? Like, how do we make this work? <laughs> Even to this day? Yeah, oh, every now and then we'll joke about wifey. Now she's all booed up, I'm booed up. It's a little weird. But they're, they're both on the same page about it, so we're cool. <laughs> Everybody come together, have a conversation. You guys oh, yeah. There? Okay, perfect. It's cool. All right. Toughest matchup? Like, just in general. Mm -hmm. Um... <clears throat> I mean, you're pretty tough. You're pretty tough. That's why I don't guard you when we play you. <laughs> um, Lindsay Whalen was one that was always, like, she always puts pressure on you defensively. Uh -huh. But you know who used to guard me the best? Jen Azy. She just, like, had my number. She would, like, block my pull-ups. You know, like, usually you're pulling up because you, like, shook somebody. You're not pulling up. Like, she would come out of nowhere and block it. I'm like, what the? She just had my number. Okay. Um, if we did have a season... Rookie of the year? Uh, I think it's going to be Kennedy Carter. Ooh. I do. The, the one thing is when I do start to look at their roster, you brought this to my attention. Yeah. When you do start to look at their roster, they are there's a little bit of a jam up at that position. So I worry about just like minutes and whatnot. And time um, to follow up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The other thing, you know, we talked about Sabrina. The one thing about Sabrina is, the more I like listen to her in interviews, she's got her mind right. Like she wants to do this. This is she's not gonna miss any opportunities. So there's that too. Okay, um, let's go with this. Has to be different than your favorite pick and roll partner and the best hands. Okay. Okay. Best finisher. Swing. Okay. Um, all right. Let's get in a little harder questions. Okay. Biggest trash talker in the WNBA. Um, I guess D. <laughs> like nobody do do you like what's your answer? Um, I would say that I mean Courtney Williams is, is kind of been like Yeah, she's getting there. Out lately. No, that's true. She's the she's like in the last year, year too. Yeah. Yeah, the last two years she's been like mm -hmm. as she's jumping up like the high ass like jumping jumper, she's like saying something in the air. I'm like <laughs> Yeah, well you guys had to see it on your home court, no? Yeah. Too soon? Listen. I'm just playing. <laughs> All right, most hated team. Uh, are you guys the most hated? I think so. It's possible. Everywhere we go, they have a champ beat LA. Or LA. I know. It just like rolls off your tongue. That's actually the Lakers' fault too, though. True. That's like Whatever. every team had a beat LA chant. I know, even there was like early in my career. I'm talking early. Like, Lisa Leslie's, like, prime Lisa Leslie. I'm, like, a rookie second year. And our fans would chant beat LA. And in my head, I was like, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a couple of years. We'll get there. We're not quite there yet. <laughs> to do that. Okay. Yeah, that was, like, the rivalry. No, yeah, you guys might be up there. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, most underrated player? Ooh, Alicia Clark. Okay. Going with she doesn't the get the shine, man. Uh-huh. She really doesn't. She really what, what, is it? what is it about her? Well, it's like she's been left off all defensive teams. Mm -hmm. Like, I think she got on this past year, but she's been left off, off before. I think her story in and of itself is like this underdog kind of like, you know, getting to places nobody ever thought she could get. And now she's like was a starter on a championship team. And, and, and it wasn't just a starter. Like, I can legit listen. We can all say like if Stewie didn't play, we wouldn't have won. If this one didn't. But – AC had to guard every single tough assignment. So we're talking Diana and Christy Tolliver. Mm -hmm. And it's not that she, those players, you're not going to shut them down, but she did enough. And not many defenders can say that. 
Mm -hmm. And I just don't think she gets the love that she deserves it for so okay. many reasons. Shout out, shout out, shout out. Yeah, it's um, one of my favorite teammates, like of all time. It's like, I'm not joking. That's cool. That's good to hear. Except when she plays against me. Like that, I could, I could. No, she's that. tough. It's like a gnat. Yeah, yeah. I, and I she just happy. like worked on her game so much. I mean, I know people can't see that, but I saw it. Okay. Um, okay, hardest position to play? Point guard. <laughs> I'm like, you want to know how I know it's hard? Because when other people, you want to know it's hard? When I go to the two, I'm like, oh, this is such a nice vacation. I don't have to think. You're like running up the sideline, and then we take a bad shot. I'm like, exactly. We That's We it. take it all on. It's all on us. But then when I when I move to the two, I, I like to do the, oh, what, what play was that? I couldn't hear you. What'd you call? First thing out of my mouth almost every time. <laughs> it's like a vacation over there. <laughs> I, I, I would have to agree. You have to like think for one through five. Think for, for everybody. One. For everybody. I agree. All right. Last two questions. Dream okay. lineup for men and then the dream lineup for women. I'm awful at this. Um, okay. I'm don't, really don't awful stress at it. Yourself out. I'm okay. stressed. Okay. All right. Dream lineup for men. I guess I'd go, I'll take Kyrie. One. I'll okay. take LeBron. This is probably going to be all recent people. Um, Anthony Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, Kawhi. Ooh. And uh, so we've got boom, boom, boom. Oh, you know what to round it out with? Clay Thompson. That you would be my. Clay? That would be my underrated, by the way, for men's basketball. I love Clay's game. This man scores 38 points in five dribbles. That's, like, unbelievable. I mean, we call him two dribble Clay. Like, all he needs is, like, that one-two, and it's up. Yeah. So, I like, I like that five. I'm going to roll with that five. Okay, that five. I really five. went on a limb there, too. Picked a lot of terrible players. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, dream lineup for women. Women's side, dream lineup. Okay. <sighs> I'll start in reverse. So, I'll, all right, I'm like hard to not pick my own peeps. So we're gonna go Stewie, Lauren. I'll have Stewie at the three, even though I don't always love that. Stewie, Lauren, Lisa. Oh, this is hard. Stewie. Oh, do I leave? Oh, I want to put Tina Thompson on Yolanda there Griffin? so bad. What? Are you thinking about Yolanda Griffin? Or no? no, I could. I was thinking about Tina Thompson. Is Stewie too young for this lineup? Let's leave Stewie off. Lauren, Lisa, Tina, D. I mean, do I have to pick myself? You can. <laughs> Is it weird not to? I'll pick myself. <laughs> okay. Perfect. All right. I think that's it. I think that's all the questions I have. Okay. Uh, the rapid fire. Thanks for chatting and no talking. No problem, man. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I gotta send you some wine. I keep forgetting. Yeah, you keep on every time. I know. Every time I know. I, I just keep. I literally talk about wine. I'm just like. I know. The wine. <laughs> so, I see it every time though. I don't really see the comments much. I always see yours. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know, damn, like I forgot. You'll do like a wave, and I'm just like, okay, hey Sue. <laughs> just pops up, and then uh, you see comments out of that Sue, 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 Sue. Yeah. Sue's here. Sue's here. <laughs> All right, we'll say hello to Megan. I will. Whatever. Say hello to everybody. Uh, I feel like you have a full house. No, not right now. No, not right I, now? My brother lives, like, around the corner, but... Oh, okay. That's nice. It's not, it's not too bad. Did you put your hoop together? Yeah, just put it together. It was dark, so I couldn't take a picture. I'm going to take a picture tomorrow. Okay, I look forward to it. Now, do you go out there and shoot? It's in my sister's driveway. I, I mean, I try. I'm like, this is in a driveway. There's not much... It's Are a skinny driveway, too. Are you Am I what? Riding the Peloton? Yeah. I'll That's probably be more of a professional Pelotoner than I will be a professional basketball player in a couple of weeks, to be honest. Peloton's really good. Like a 15 minute workout and you're just like drenched. Yeah. So I have this theory that the shorter ones are actually harder because you don't get any rest in them. They like try to kill you for 15 minutes. Whereas in the 30 minute ones, they're like, okay, one minute recovery. Yeah. Or then like a two minute flat road. So yeah. Just, just, hey. Don't push it too much. Love a good flat road. <laughs> That's true. Okay. I'm going to use that theory. Yeah. Take good luck. all the 15, 10 minute classes. I'm going I'm to text you, get your name so I can follow you and high five you. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. You guys good to see you. Bye bye. All right. Bye.